today I'd like to talk about installing a paver floor in a greenhouse. Well actually you would also use this procedure for making a nice storage area or even a walkway. My favorite paver to use is a 12 by 12 inch by 2 inch thick paver. Well wait a minute. Six months ago it was two inches thick. Well it looks like they've now dropped the size to one and a half inches but kept the price the same. Well, the food industry's been giving customers less product for the same price for years. So I guess it's time the big box stores get involved with that. Anyway, in my video I'm installing 2 inch thick pavers. If you get stuck buying these thinner ones, you'll just have to be more delicate with them. When you're buying your pavers, you want to be aware that some of them are beveled on the corners. This is actually a nice feature. Unless you're buying bricks to add to an existing system that doesn't have bevels. Then it'll stick out like a sore thumb. If you made this mistake and bought the wrong ones, just turn the brick over. The bottom side's not beveled. The first thing we'll have to do is prepare the ground. You'll want the ground to be smooth, but more importantly, you want the ground to be compressed or packed in. If you don't pack the dirt before you put your pavers down, over time your pavers will change position and become uneven. For packing down dirt around your house, this is the tool you'll want to use. It's called a tamper. Let's take a look at how to use it. First, we smooth out the dirt. You take the tamper, lift it up, and then slam it down into the ground. This job is a lot easier if you have a little bit of upper body strength. Remember, the more packed, the better. I spent about an hour and a half doing this 6 by 8 foot area. With the dirt packed, we now want to apply a leveling compound. Usually this is in the form of sand. The better job you did on leveling your ground, the less sand you'll need. But in this case, I'm adding enough sand so my pavers will be level with my 4x4 foundation of the greenhouse. Do a rough leveling with a rake. And for the final leveling, grab a board that's as wide as your project. All the high and low spots become extremely obvious when you start dragging a board across sand. And the board provides a convenient place to place your level. If you did a good job, this is what it'll look like. Once you have it level, you want to tamp it down the same way you did the dirt. If you're not in a hurry, the perfect way to compact sand is to get it wet. Sprinkle it with a garden hose, then let it dry out. It's time for us to start putting down pavers. The tool that'll make this job remarkably easy is a trowel. Normally used in concrete and mortar work, but works wonderfully for moving sand. The first paver we're going to put down will be the corner one. Since all future pavers you're going to install will be based on this paver, you want to spend extra time putting this one in very accurately. This means you want it to be level and at the correct height. To set the paver in place, we're going to use a 3 pound sledgehammer. But never hit the paver directly with the sledge. I use a chunk of 4x4. Four four. It works wonderfully at spreading out the blow. Before we go much further, let me share a little information with you that will make your life a lot easier. Normally I go into the store and select my own building materials, verifying the quality of the item before I buy it. But due to a little thing we had called COVID, I use curbside pickup on these pavers, which means the Home Depot employees are the ones that pick these pavers. They just loaded 50 pavers without even looking at them. So the reason why this paver won't fit properly is it was built wrong. It has a little lip at the bottom which prevents you from setting the pavers up flush. This makes the paver absolutely useless unless I can figure out how to fix it. And this was not an isolated incident. After putting down nine pavers, five of them were bad. This is a 55% error rate. Moral of the story, rethink shopping at Home Depot and... And always inspect your materials before you buy them. Okay, let's try to fix these things. If you try to knock the lip off with a brick chisel, you'll find that it will do considerable damage to the back side of the brick. All right, let's try something different. Head back to the store, preferably not Home Depot. You can buy these special blades coated with diamonds that'll go on your skill saw and can cut concrete. This option worked rather well, actually. Let's talk about some tricks to make installation easier. The first thing I do is make a small divot in the sand right in the corner. This is because sand has a tendency to crawl up into this corner as you're pounding on the paver. 
Now I temporarily place the paper into position so I can do a thorough job of packing the sand beneath it. Carefully slide the paver off, trying not to disturb the sand down below. Here's a simplified drawing of what we're about ready to do. I'm going to place this new paver next to an existing paver. I'll remove just a little bit of sand in the middle of the paver. This ensures there's no high spot, which means your paver will not rock. I also remove a little sand along existing pavers to prevent sand creep up like this. Let's take a look at what this looks like. You can see here why the trowel is a perfect tool for this job. While you're using your sledgehammer to do the final set on your paver, make sure the 4x4 overlaps the surrounding pavers. This will ensure they're all at exactly the same height. When we get to this side of the floor, we're going to have to cut some pavers to fit. To accomplish this, we'll use a combination square, the diamond-coated blade that we bought earlier, installed onto a rip saw, and a brick chisel. The combination square is the perfect tool for making these measurements. Not only is the ruler portion of it adjustable, but it gives you a perfect square measurement on your brick. While making my cut with the rip saw, instead of cutting from the back and working forward like you normally would do with wood, I start at the front and work backwards. This way all the debris that the saw blade is making has an easy path to exit from the paver. If I was pushing the saw forward, all this concrete dust would be piling up inside my cut and then getting sucked into the motor of the saw. And that's actually a bad thing. Since the blades are relatively expensive, I don't actually cut all the way through the brick. You're just wearing out the blade. Cut one half to three quarters of the way through, then take your brick chisel and give it a good whack. More often than not, this will give you a nice clean cut on the bottom half of the brick. But if it doesn't give you a good clean cut, you can go back and touch it up with the rip saw. There you go, one paver cut to the proper size. Since these last blocks will fit very tightly, they'll be difficult to get out. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking to make sure that I have enough sand to put the pavers slightly above the surrounding pavers. I used a small piece of paver to check for the proper height. Put a divot in the center to prevent rocking. One last check. And install. Now comes the fun part. Bring back your trusty assistant. You want to spread sand all over the pavers and work it into the cracks between them. Remember at the beginning of the movie I said water is a wonderful tool when working with sand. Break out your garden hose and you'll be simply amazed at how efficiently it gets the sand between the pavers. This will effectively lock the pavers into place. And there you have it. You now have a greenhouse floor that'll probably outlast the greenhouse. Well, thanks for watching.